Welcome to Hitching Girls School Sixth Form presentation. I'm going, the aim of this is to just talk you through some general aspects of the sixth form and give you some ideas about what to think about when choosing your options. I'll also explain how we work as a consortium with the three other schools and what that might look like for you should you wish to join us. For many of you, I'm sure it feels like not too long ago, you were making your option decisions in year nine. Sometimes it can be really easy. You know exactly what it is that you want to do. And other times it's quite tricky because you're trying to think of something that's quite different and unfamiliar. You've got new subjects that are available to you to explore at sixth form. Um, and you may have some subjects that you've really enjoyed lower down. So a few things to ask yourself is, what do, is there something I particularly want to study maybe later on? Um, and then how do the options that I might pick at A-level fit with that? Um, is sixth form for me? A-levels and BTECs and the, the subjects on offer the kind of things I want? Um, and also, what sort of things really work well for you? Now, a key bit of advice I'd say is make sure you, you, you're quite selfish with what you pick. This is a, a point where you're really thinking about what it is you want to move on to next. You might not be quite sure of that, but what you want to do is I have a two years experience if you join us in the sixth form studying things that you enjoy. So it says on the screen, we're hopefully going to give you some advice around things to look for. And as I already said, there's quite a few subjects that you've probably not come across before. So things to think about, do some good exploration of the subjects. Um, have a look at some of the books in the library or bookshops and, and find out what does this subject really involve. Make sure you watch the videos that we've put together on the website and I will come to those in a bit. Also think about what are your strengths and weaknesses because different courses assess those your skills in different ways. So you might enjoy something which is a lot of portfolio work or where you've got some coursework elements working through um, and some subjects offer that whereas others are all completely exam based. So think about those. Do think about your future career path. If you're not sure, keep your options broad. But if you've got a particular thing that you're thinking about studying, then make sure that you're having a look on things like UCAS, or if you're one of our students, we use Unifrog. And your schools, if you're from another school, you might have something similar. But make sure you have a look. Okay, if, I'm, if I really want to go on and do X, Y, and Z when I leave sixth form, what subjects do I need to make sure I'm on the right path to get there? As part of the process, once you've um, put your options or applications in, you will have an interview with me. So I will talk you through those things again as well. So we really check that you're making the right choices with your options. We do work as a consortium and our consortium consists of our school, the boys school and the primary school. This enables us to offer a huge range of options for you to choose from. We do provide transport between here and the primary school during the school day to get you from um, one site to the other or back should you need to. Um, unfortunately, you do have to walk up and down the hill to the boys school and the, the, the walk up, back up is a little bit harder. It's certainly a lot harder than the walk on the way down. The way we work, so some subjects are solely taught here at the girls' school. And if you pick one of those subjects and it works on your timetable, then you will have all of your subjects here. You may well have students joining you from the other consortium schools in some of those subjects. Some subjects are joint taught, PE music, for example. So PE is taught by all three schools. Um, you may well have your lessons on our site. You might have your lessons somewhere else. Um, but the PE teachers... Um, to teach certain aspects that um, are their specialisms and strengths. Other subjects are taught on rotation. So something like um, French or Spanish, you sometimes have a, a pair of our school and maybe the boys school and that swaps around year on year. The advantage of a consortium, it does mean you're mixing with new students, you're getting to meet new teachers. But as I say, it gives us an, the possibility to really make those option blocks work for you. So the way we timetable, we, as I say, we will try and timetable students here. If it's a subject that we don't offer here, for example, something like um, economics, which is only offered at the boys' school and the priory, then we'll have a look to see which um, class best suits your other options and put you in one of those classes. If when we're timetabling you, there's a clash of, although all of your subjects are offered here, but they don't work because there's a clash on the timetable, that's when we'll go and have a look and say, okay, we need 
that we can't make geography work for the student, how can we put them somewhere else? The majority of those clash, clashes, despite a huge number of students um, being in the sixth form across the three schools, we are able to resolve, which is why we do our options a little bit early. It enables us then to see what the patterns are, how, where, if we have it or where we might have any issues and make some movement around. So basically, we what the timetable was built around your options. Um, you're the first thing that we look at across the three schools. In terms of your subjects, I said about finding out and doing some reading around your subjects. <clears throat> You, we also on the website have videos and information about the specifications for each of the subjects that you have. Um, so please use those to find out more about what it is you might want to study. And that can be a good starting point. OK, I know I want to do art. This is the exam board. This is the specification. And then you can do a bit more research into that. The way the website works, you start on a front page, which is a consulting page. You select the school. So if you're looking to join us, if you want to join Hitching Girls School, then pick Hitching Girls School and look through our section there. Um, if you are an external student, what you do is apply to one school and that becomes your home school where you have your lessons, you'll have your form time and all your kind of enrichment activities and things like that. Um, and then in terms of the timetable for all students, um, we, we work around as a consortium where we where that works best for you and your timetable. So the website in the subject area, you will find at the top all the subjects that are taught at our school and then lower down, it will give you all of the subjects that are offered within the consortium that are consortium subjects. And it'll give you an idea of where they're delivered, whether it's at one school or um, you can actually ask, access that at a couple of schools. Um, so hopefully that makes that really clear about what sort of things you will be looking at. In the prospectus, um, we do, as I say, offer a wide range of um, options. At the back of the prospectus, there's a, a, a few pages that are really helpful. First of all, we've got a which school are the subjects taught in, so you can quickly see that at a glance. Also at the back of the prospectus are the entry requirements. Um, and so you can have a quick look and go, OK, I'm thinking about studying this. Will I make the entry requirements based on how I'm getting on in my GCSEs currently? So some entry requirements are specific. So if you are studying a subject, let's say history, then we will expect you to have a certain grade in that subject. If it's um, for sciences, sometimes we say, right, you need to have a certain grade in maths alongside passing um, a certain level in your, let's say, biology. Um, other subjects, there are also APSs in there. An APS is an average of all the points of all the GCSE students um, gain. So you work that out by having a look how, what subjects are they doing, add up the predicted grades for those subjects, and then divide it by the number of subjects that you have. That gives you your APS. When we look at student suitability for courses in the summer, we will look carefully at their results and have conversations with them. Should they be a little bit out to see actually whether we think they'll cope with the course, even though they might have missed one of the entry requirement aspects. Um, the entry requirements are in there because we've basically had a look for an, a number of years really carefully at the data and what students were coming into subjects with, and particularly when the A-levels were reformed, because um, obviously we don't want to start students on subjects that we know actually the data shows us that they'll fail at the end of year 13. A fail for us is a student getting a U grade, an A to E at A-level is a pass. In terms of combinations, some there's some combinations that are good to do together if you've got a particular subject in mind. So you've got some examples there for medicine. Medicine's an interesting one. Some universities, Cambridge, for example, will ask for maths um, to study medicine at their university. Other universities don't ask for that. So that's a good thing to start drilling if you've got a view of maybe what universities you might be wanting to look at, what are the combinations those universities are looking at. Sports science, if you're looking for something like like that a combination of PE, certainly, biology, um, psychology are quite useful when looking at the science and psychology behind um, sports. So those are subjects that would best um, work well for a sports science kind of route. If you're looking at humanities, a collection of the humanities where you're really working on your essay skills um, is advisable. Um, new subject there for you might be something like government and politics. So uh, if you're, that's an, you're interested in humanities, that might be a new one for you to explore. Uh, finance, certainly business studies, economics, maths. Um, in, again, depending on the university and depending on the courses, they'll have different special uh, requirements. If you're looking at art, you might want to 
dovetail that with other design courses, textiles and media. Um, for us, for if you select art, we haven't got a, a separate photography option, but as part of the art course, you can um, select to do the photography endorsement. So if you if you pick art and you're interested in photography, then pick art basically, because you will be have the opportunity to specialise in that. Um, in terms of the um, other options, we've got media there. ICT often works quite nicely with that. English works quite nicely with that. If you're looking at care professions, again, your health and social care, your sociology, your psychology might be well viewed. Languages are often viewed very highly by universities, even if it's something you don't want to go on and study. But if you've got a, a flair for languages then, and you're not quite sure about which direction you want to go, that might be one to keep going at your A-level studies. So, can be quite challenging sixth form. Um, we don't expect you all of a sudden to walk out of year 11 and all of a sudden be a ready to go sixth form student. Um, so we will encourage you to do things out and again you will have a lot of time where you don't have lessons timetable so we will encourage you to do things about reading around the subject and our specific six form website has lots of information in the net there that we've put together over the years with to help you do that um, you'll have a it's a great chance to really specialize in things you're interested in um, and also then to start thinking about beyond and whether that be university or apprenticeships or work and again we'll really work with you to explore those options as year 12 and you move into year 13 and we've got a real program there to do that. We do know it's exciting sixth form but it also can be challenging and balancing and working on um, ensuring that you're using your time effectively. So we work hard to try and make that transition um, nice and smooth. So we will set you some work to do in the summer that looks at study skills and how to do note taking and also exploring some of the careers options and things and skills in Unifrog. Um, that you, you will need to develop over time. We have a pastoral person dedicated to sixth form. So if you have a pastoral issue, there's someone there that you can go and talk to. And Mrs. Permissa works as our um, admin for sixth form. I know our staff here really do go the extra mile to support students and there's a huge range of extracurricular activities that are timetabled but also there's a lot that goes on when students are perhaps struggling with the subject teachers will give their time to sit down and work with you um, and buddy you up perhaps with someone if you need a bit of mentoring. We have a house system here so if you're new to the school that and again house activities and prefects lead on those house activities and it's been really exciting to see all the, the stuff we've got going this year. Join form time, again, all of those things that we have talked about, study skills, settling yourself in, um, building up those skills um, for your applications later on are all built into the two year programme that we've had, we have. And we've worked really, really hard on our tutor programme so that by the time you get to the, the end of year 12, really, and you're starting year 13, you will be you'll already have a load of things in your bag ready to help you move on to those next phases. In terms of what sixth form will look like, you'll have about 26 to 36 hours of teaching, depending on if you've done three or four subjects, and also depending on if you've picked um, enrichment activities such as the EPQ or core maths. We will contact you later. We won't ask you to put those down to start with. We'll contact you later in the year after Christmas about our enrichment subjects and ask you if there's something you're interested in. You do not have to do the enrichment subjects. You can choose to do other things as well. Um, we as I say, we have our tutor time and a massive range of activities. Sixth form tutor groups are you are rearranged in sixth form. So if you're a student currently with us, you keep your house, but we reorganize the, the sixth form tutor groups broadly around the subjects that you've picked. Um, and that's just to give a, a nice fresh start there in sixth form and it's worked really it's something that works really well for us we've invested in a program called vespa and this is to help um, it works on a, a number of skills and in, in, including your study skills and organizational skills and these again will be delivered in form time so it, it draws together a whole range of aspects to support you and ensure that you achieve and do the very best you can and work on key behaviors that um that successful people display um, in 
in sixth form in universities and in their careers and beyond. So VESPA stands for vision. So thinking about your vision and what it is you want to achieve. Then effort. So what effort do you need to put in to make sure that vision is achieved? Systems, the organizational aspects that you need to have in place to make sure that that happens. Practice. So going over and doing things again and again and again till they become very solid and things that you are easily able to do. And then attitude, working on how we respond, particularly to set backs because sixth form is not a it's well I think any study is not always a smooth road but there will be points where things become difficult and hard so thinking up how do we work on our attitude towards those and that's what that program is about it's very very popular and something we we certainly feel is a real strength um, that we offer that through the tutor program. In terms of enrichment opportunities, um, students are able to be either learning leaders in school, that means um, volunteering with a department and being taken on that real leadership responsibility in terms of running clubs or maybe setting up lunchtime activities or mentoring and, and coaching younger students. Our ambassadors program is something we encourage students to go out into the community and do some volunteering. That can be sometimes it might be be, um, I'm thinking of being a primary school teacher so actually I want to do some regular vol volunteering in a primary school I've got students who are volunteering in charity shops sometimes it's very much related to what students want to go on to study so it might be actually I'm going to go and volunteer at a pharmacy or a care home because actually I want to go into that kind of care profession so those two we, we will speak to students about in September um, and then they'll have a few weeks to organise once they know what their timetable is, what those, those volunteering experiences are going to be. For the community ambassadors, students can use, so if they know they've got actually an afternoon where they've got study periods, they can use some of that time as part of their volunteering. We don't send students out on a work experience as per se, but what we say is we will support students in looking for work experience um, that supports um, the areas that they're looking to go into. Throughout the year, we have a variety of study skills workshops and people coming in to work with students on things like presentation skills, team working skills, and some day, some Sometimes those are whole days, sometimes those are during the school day. And what we've, we've um, done within the timetable is preserved hours um, throughout the two-week timetable where all of year 12 and all of year 13 are available so we can bring people in to do maybe smaller group work or whole year group work without disrupting lessons. We do have people come in from universities and there's been a huge amount available online. So through Unifrog, um, the, they've, been, they've got a whole area where students can have a look at what universities are doing, attend lectures, um, look at MOOCs, so their online courses that students students can do so I'm interested in doing this as a career or at university and they can they can do extra outside of their studies to show actually they're really interested and also explore that as an area as well. We have a massive pre fact team both in year 12 and year 13 so again those leadership roles are there in different areas um, that might be of interest to students. In terms of UCAS support we're very experienced with supporting students with their UCAS process whether that be Oxbridge or the ordinary applications um, or our medics and dentists and vets have uh, additional support and there's a MedSOX group that meets and is run by the students for those students looking at a medical based um, career and direction so that they can actually get practiced in talking about those areas, why they're interested in them, um, and also look at some of the things that might come up uh, as part of the interview process um, and admissions exams. As I've already mentioned, we do offer some enrichment. So the extended project, the EPQ, that's sat in year 12 and students basically research and study something they're interested in. There's also sports leaders at level two and level three. But um, and again, students can opt to um, select that. Lots and lots of school trips. The core maths is another option we've, we've introduced in the last year or so. And that's really core cool maths for students thinking, oh, OK, I want to carry on with sciences, but actually I don't want to do maths as a, an option, but actually doing some extra maths, let's say if I'm doing chemistry, might actually help me out. And there's quite a bit of maths throughout quite a number of the subjects at A-level. And we also are part of the um, student global global leadership initiative um, and students in the past few years have had the chance to go to Hawaii and India and work with students internationally as part of that. There is an area on the website about enrichment and you can go there and find out a bit more about that. 
as I say, we do have we have dedicated career support in school. We work, we have an independent careers advisor who um, we employ to provide independent support, and we also have careers advisors in school who will meet and work with students and do a one to one in careers interview with them throughout their their time in sixth form. Um, we also subscribe to Unifrog, which I've mentioned a few times. And if you're an external student that um, decides to apply to us when we do the induction process in um, the taster lessons in the summer, you will get an invite to open up a, um, a guest Unifrog account. We do have a lovely sixth form block, which um, is purpose built and for us. So in the top corner there, you can see the common room. That's a quiet study area during lesson times and a very busy area during lunch and break. And we've got all the classrooms downstairs are for sixth form students only. So it's kind of our little space um, and area. We also use um, what is called the lower school hall. Um, for an extra area for study and students in the sixth form are also able to use the library. We have expanded the school quite extensively over the past few years. So we've got a, a brand new sports hall. Over there, there is a fitness centre which sixth formers can use during the school day should they wish. And they just have to go down there in pairs and make sure they've done their induction, which the PE department offer in the summer. That's just where they talk them through the equipment and how to use things. In terms of um, what school's like, we're very forward thinking. As you can see, we've got a lot of new buildings um, and a lot of, we've invested in a lot of technology. So, but we do have a lot of traditions as well. Um, you can see that's a picture of our sports day there. And on the top right, we have something called Founders Day where we celebrate um, we, we exchange prefects and invite um, welcome in the new senior prefect, but also say goodbye to the students that are leaving us. Um, as I say, though, whilst being very traditional, we are very forward thinking. We ask all students in sixth form to bring their own personal devices so that they can use those in lessons. Um, and we've upgraded our wireless to make sure that actually everybody can get on our wireless with a guest login. In terms of our performance, so if you're thinking, well, why go to the Hitchin Girls School. I've put up our ALPS thermometer. ALPS is a um, program where we put our results in and it tells us how well each of our individual subjects are performing, but also how well our sixth form is performing against other sixth forms across the school with students with similar um, achievements in terms of their GCSE results. So we in 2019 were a two and the same in 2018. I've gone back to those dates because they were obviously we've had disruption to the way um, students have been examined for the past few years but we are consistently within that top level, the top 25%, the top achieving six forms in the country um, and I'm very proud of that and we work very hard to make sure we maintain that and achieve that. In terms of submitting your options, if you're an external student, you, we would require a bit more information from you. So you would must need to make sure that you fill in the external student options form. Um, and if you're a HGS student, then you fill in the HGS options form. These will remain open. So once you've submitted your options, if you change your mind at a later date, you can go back into those options forms and resubmit your options. And it alerts us with timestamp so we can see that it's a, a new submission. Um, obviously, we ask you by a certain date, and I'll come to that in a moment, to get your options in. And that's so we can start thinking about, okay, how many classes per subject do we need to be running? Do we need to find some extra staff to deliver certain things? Um, and we, we have those discussions across the three schools to try and make things work for everybody as best as possible. Um, it's very important for external students that you give us all the information we ask for, because we will need to be in contact with you um, to invite you for an interview interview with myself. Um, last year, those were done um, as virtual meets and we'll see how that, how that works this year. Um, and also all of our internal students, everyone that puts all year 11s will have a meeting with us to speak to them as well. Admissions to the sixth form. So in terms of getting into the sixth form, you do need to uh, make sure you meet the entry requirements, which is you need five times level four grades or above. So five subjects where you've got a four or above. You must have a four in your maths and English. And that if you've taken a short course or so half a GCSE, they do not count in that four grades or above. As I say, we do have specific instructions um, in terms of entry requirements per subject. So 
make sure you check the subject entry requirement and are you working in, in or around that area for that subject. In terms of the timeline, um, we will open up our applications process. Um, in in our students are asked to get their options in by the 18th of November. The external deadline is the 17th of December. If you apply after that point, um, we will just have to see if there are sub, um, spaces available in the subjects. And I will say last year, we did have a waiting list um, of students wanting to join us that applied later on. So it's, it's worthwhile getting it in early um, so that we can make those options work for you. We will look at doing some tours and we will invite you in um, to come and do a tour um, if you haven't been in already. Um, the interview process, so we'll speak to all year 11s about what their thoughts are of what they want to do post in terms of their post 16 options. And as I say, all external in, um, applicants will have an interview with me to discuss what they're thinking, why they're thinking and make sure they've got the right option choices there. In the summer, we run um, a set of taster sessions. So we're there from the 27th to the 29th. So students will have a timetable with their options in and they'll get to choose try out the options that they've selected and there will be a website that goes with that again with some videos um, talking about um, those taster lessons and also the students will be given some bridging work for each of their subjects to complete over the summer and also a sixth form bridging work to complete so they will have lots of things to be getting on with. In the summer students and parents will be emailed about the sixth form enrollment process as I say if you haven't quite met the entry requirements you need to get back in touch with us and then um, September so long as everything's gone well students will be starting with us for their six film journey so that's everything from me I want to say thank you for having a listen through I want to wish you the best of luck with your year 11 um, GCSEs um, and please if you wish to join us make sure you get those applications in on time thank you